in this class we're going to do our first practical of um, tracing the laptop DD4 motherboard this is a board that we have been um, teaching in the theory classes with the schematic and explanation right so this is the board this is a DD4 board and uh, as you can see we are going to do a basic starting off with the basic tracing and how to trace a dead laptop motherboard from the adapter insertion to 5 volt and 3.3 volt regulator IC and then after we're going to use oscilloscope to check the working conditions of the BIOS and the IO controller and for the trigger state right this is the S5 state okay so this is the DC jack right this is the DC jack and uh, we'll be using the schematic <clears throat> as a reference right to follow step by step through the different section until the CPU gets reset signal, right? The CPU reset signal, the CPU is not in the socket. This is an Arundel CPU, right? With GMCH and CPU that is integrated inside of the CPU. This is the PCH, right? And we're going to do the full power on sequence of the PCH using the data sheet, right? From first reset signal to PLT reset signal and the CPU gets its reset signal, right? So once the CPU, the aim of this design is for the CPU to get the reset signal so in this so we'll complete the entire power on sequence of this board for the compile right and the power on sequence is based off the chipset which is the PCH right so this is a PCH so we are going to do it step by step all right so we're going to use the schematic we are going to go to the adapter insertion test page all right so let's go let's go to page 34 hopefully good page 34 all right so this is the dc jack all right this is the dc jack this is the dc jack right jpj p1 right so as you can see on the schematic see so it's pj p1 on the schematic on the board so p number p number one two three four five See, look. P number one, two, three, four, and five. Right. So we're going to check. We don't have the DC jack. The, uh, the DC jack. We don't have the DC jack now. So we're using the DC power supply. So we're going to go to check step by step. So in the next class, I will get the DC jack and I will have it ready to power up this board. Right. So let's go through the schematic. So P number one. P number one. ADP INR adapter pin in right so that goes to so pin number one we will check this is pin number one pin number one is 18.12 voltage right this is adapter voltage right next it goes to right PL1 T 18 17 should be 18 let us check the next side all right that's 17 all right oh dc pause up i want to turn up some more all right so that's 18 18 volt to 19 good all right so let's check again this is pin number pl1 sorry 18.5 next side good 18.9 so this is okay right so pl1 after becoming after coming through pl1 it becomes v in as you can see right v in now v in is coming through another coil pl2 now pl2 is here which is also 18 voltage it's coming to here see 18.5 and coming over to the next side to this now becomes plus dock V in, which is going to the docking station on the motherboard. PL2 to become plus dock V in, which is here, right? Plus dock V in. Remember, this is for the this section is from battery, but we won't discuss the battery as yet, right? Going to the next page. So this is the battery connector, as you can see. BMB means battery positive supply, and to this car to become bat. Right, and here it is coming through but coming to this operational amplifier and it becomes battery OVP or over voltage protection which is the detection this is the 
this is the battery present signal just like the ac in signal to the io controller right so this signal is going to the io controller to detect the presence of the battery right the battery over voltage protection right so this is where if any fault here it will detect that the battery is in a, a sense a fault to a series of pull down resistance if any fault in the series resistance the voltage will, it will cut off because it's being compared with the, oh, the voltage over voltage so it is comparing with the presence of the ovp which is the battery presence so if any fault here or any fault here it will shut off from battery right and as you can know the data signal ecda1 pa and clock data and clock signal we'll check this with oscilloscope in oscilloscope we're using oscilloscope class to check these signals right we won't get there battery temp this is another battery detection signal right battery temperature signal and over voltage protection signal which is here right so these are very two important signals going to the io controller so this is the isolation and protection page as you can see and we are going to go to the next step which is pq101 which is a, a p channel MOSFET. as you can see the arrows on the outside so v in is coming to the drain pins of pin number eight five six seven eight so pq101 here it is pq101 see pq101 right pq101 is here and this is the drain pin see pin number five right pin number five pin number six pin number seven pin number seven is 18 volts these are the input coming to the drain spins of pq101 right pin number four the gate this is acting as a diode right so pq101 is acting as a diode so this is isolation this is a protection MOSFET so this is acting as a fuse also right so if any fault or over voltage happens on the B plus point this MOSFET will get hit first right this is a protection MOSFET so this as it's noticed from drain to source so this is acting as a voltage and ampere controller MOSFET also right so we'll check pin number four no matter what voltage the gate is on pin four it will just flow from drain to source so if this is 18 volts it will flow if it is less than 18 volts it will still flow so let's check pin number four pin number four 7.34 so this is a p channel mosfet so this is acting this is conducting because it's a p channel mosfet so the voltage at the gate is less than the voltage at the source so the voltage at the source is 18.9 and the voltage at the gate is 7.9 this voltage can also be 18 voltage but most times when this voltage is 18 voltage this mosfet is damaged this is your voltage and ampere controller mosfet or your power mosfet right mm -hmm. this is your power mosfet so if this voltage is 18 voltage at any given time this MOSFET is damaged you should replace it right this is normal it is 7.3 voltage so the voltage at the gate is less than the voltage at the the source right the voltage at the source is 18.8 and the voltage at the gate is 7.3 or 7.223 voltage right now this we look at the next MOSFET now PQ 103 so this is the source it produces P2 here P2 is produced at the source here, right? It's coming from drain, which is 18.9 voltage. This is P2. Now we are going to PQ103. That MOSFET is on the next side. So we'll flip the board on the next side. All right, PQ103. PQ103 is here. So we'll come. This is coming from source. So this is the source pin, pin number one. 18.7. 0.8 voltage the gate is low also 7.2 voltage right so the voltage at the gate is less than the voltage at the source so automatically from there we know that our power ac in signal is okay which is coming from here this circuit is okay so the adapter presence is okay we're going to check this circuit shortly right where v in is being compared with this 1.24 reference voltage which is coming from this diode right and it is being compared with 1.2 volt and v in which is pulled on through this resistance this is 1.3 volt and this is 1.2 volt so 1.3 volt is on the in not this is the non-inverting and the negative is the inverting so the voltage at the non-inverting is greater than the voltage at the inverting so it will output a high level with of ac in and power ac in which is 3.2 voltage and this voltage is coming to conduct to this mosfet pq 109a and it's conducting pq 109b and it is coming 
the ground will shift over here it will conduct ground and these PR109 and PR106 will become a pull down resistance or voltage divider which is pulling this 18 voltage to You simply